It was up. It's another episode of Watch You Strap In. Well, actually, no, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong uh, title. I am going to uh, finally get to try on these straps. Um, size the bracelet. Sorry about the mess. I'm just trying to get into it. So uh, I showed the unboxing. So the bracelet and the Jubilee that comes with the watch. Um, this Ferrer <coughs> Amand. <coughs> Excuse me. Is, um <coughs> Uh, yeah, came with that, so we're gonna go into it. So it came on the strap. It's a nice whirling leather. As you can see, it's rather on the thick side, but um, I'm sure it'll break in nicely. So you can see it's pretty, pretty stiff. So for this, I got my modded G sock here. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta stop. I'm not timing anymore. Reset. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got on. Uh, but oh, I've been, uh, as you've seen in the boxing, I had three watches. The new Willard, this mod, and this. That's a problem when you have a bunch of watches that come in at the same time. You only have so much time to try on the new stuff. So I was on the Willard for a while, a uh, few days, running great, pretty good. It's a little bit slower than I wanted. Um, it's not super slow, it's about minus five, six seconds, I think. Uh, I gotta try it again, see how it goes, but that's what the initial three days were showing about, uh, which is, it's, 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 a, it's doable for me. Uh, and this is always accurate, of course. And now we're gonna try this one. So uh, I'm probably gonna do this first, and then the next, uh, going into the weekend, I'll probably switch it to um, the leather strap since I don't have to worry about cleaning it. And then uh, once going in back into the work week, uh, probably put it onto something washable and more uh, waterproof, and the bracelet will be great. So let's get into it. Um, right now, to try the strap on, you, we'll just put it on as is, just to show you on my wrist, that's 6.875 inches. At least that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, you can see how stiff it is. <laughs> um, and it, this is where it's at. One, two, three, I guess four, five. I'm pretty sure this, there's one more hole. Yeah, so this is the fifth hole from the end. Um, let's see, can I angle it down slightly more? Okay. And um, it probably could go more because it's so like straight. Right now off of here you can feel it really like like uh, pinching the the wrist a bit that's how stiff it is um it's time to do some breaking in and it's not just wearing it usually when something this new that comes in and uh it's stiff um i would probably just kind of work it and condition it a bit so that it's got some more natural form so you can see actually it actually stick here and it thins and this part is actually kind of a little bit nicer, but this thing right in this area, which is very critical once it comes right off of the the lugs, needs to be a little bit more um, uh, curved. <clears throat> so what I usually do is just do like a kind of bendy roll on this. I don't really need it so much at the end, but I just kind of follow through. I go one, just, just like a straight roll down the best I can, like that. Kind of work, massage it in, I guess, in a way, and then I will also go like diagonally, like kind of roll it out this way, and then roll it across this way. You'll see what I mean. I'm like I'm kind of almost twisting it a bit. See, and then I'm kind of rolling it at an angle like this. Then I'll do it the other way. I'll twist it the other direction. You can see how it changes the. Uh, the look of the leather too a bit. It would make it look a little more distressed, which it should be because I am kind of distressing this. So I'm going to curve this like so and roll it just to give it the most pliability over wrist. And then I'll do it again on the other side again. <clears throat> Not worried about breaking anything. This is a pretty hardy strap. You can feel it. You can kind of see it too. Um, and 
just kind of roll it. Not to worry too much about the ends. Again, it's mostly right up here with the thickest. And then we're going to just straighten it out so it's not going to end up being twisted one way or the other. We want to even it back out so it goes over the wrist more easily. And that's how I usually do kind of work like a new strap that's pretty stiff to begin with just to start to get it to be more comfortable and just kind of roll it around my finger to get that a little bit tighter radius or curvature because it can always open up more you know once you kind of you get on wrist and it'll kind of self-adjust but the tricky part is getting it to curve enough so I just roll it and then I kind of go back and forth we're twisting it a little bit like that again, and this, and then back again to it's an even roll right off of there. So it's not really, you know, bending or twisting one way or the other naturally. And <clears throat> there we go. You can see, I get this back in frame. This is where I just bent and kind of worked it. And you can see it's got a nice curve. Whereas this one, <laughs> it's different. Well, yeah, kind of stiff as a board. And um, this already, you can feel it. It's kind of, yeah, this one feels really hard right now. And I'm trying to do like this, this simple kind of uh, pushing or bending or kind of just trying to see how it flexes. As this one, I can already feel it's softer already. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can tell from the tone, Probably too might be a little too subtle, but you can see the the stress starting to show on this this leather here. Whereas this one's bit, it's you know it's got a little bit, but it's more even. This has kind of opened up some of it, and um, I don't mind. I think uh, leather should have a nice warm look, unless you're really going fancy with a dress watch or something. Then you may want to have it a little bit tighter and cleaner and more solid looking. Um, but I'm not into dress washes, so I probably never know what that is. But as I would imagine, that's probably what you want to do, right? Dressed up, nice, clean, nothing that looks overly work. Is this something that looks refined and really well made? And this would be distressed looking, I suppose. At least with a really you're going with a high end look, a uh, dress watch, you know. You just think of shiny leather, patent leather shoes, or something, <laughs> or at least very well polished. You know, they're not going to look distressed and like super worn out um, for a dress look. But this is by no means a dress watch. But, you know, I, I wouldn't care. I would probably, I would wear this with a suit and tie. Why not? <clears throat> I don't really believe in holding any kind of like limitations to what you can and can't wear. And G-Shock, put that on too. I mean... As most people know, unless you're a watch enthusiast, and even if you are, most people don't give a crap what's on your wrist. <clears throat> you swear wearing an Apple Watch or something, or a smartwatch, is going to be any more dressier and, and uh, universal. So, and I think, that, yeah, the nice consequence of just adding this curvature, a little more natural bend and just softening up, is that it also creates a little bit more distress, which I think works looks good with leather and especially in the field watch like this <clears throat> you're going to want that so this one i'm going to do the same thing but it might be a little trickier because it's shorter so i don't know you don't generally have as much you know um something about the length of this side makes it easier to grip and start to get that that uh roll going so yeah Do, would I prefer it if it didn't have to do this? I guess so. Why, why put in the extra effort, right? But I don't mind. As long as the strap is good quality and and um, you know, I like the look of it. I mean, this is a nice brown and and I, you know it just works nicely with uh, again fuel style and then with the brown and navy they just work together pretty well. And I think uh, probably grays. Just there was three kind of tones i think it works it's funny i should be like not talking about dress watches but as far as like a classic 
dress suit it goes suit and tie i think if you have any mixture of gray browns and navy dark blue it, you know those usually work pretty well together in a suit <clears throat> all right you can do a navy suit with brown shoes you can even do it with gray but i think brown looks better um have or maybe have like small fine gray pinstripes in the blue suit perhaps as a shirt there's something about that kind of the combination it looks good <clears throat> and of course you could do other ones but for me that's definitely stuck in my mind as a very classic color combination of just a nice brown a dark blue and a, a good gray and um yeah so I'm, again i'm doing the same thing just twisting this could be very boring so if you want try to fast forward it <laughs> but you know you get an idea of this i'm just trying to do it maybe i should pause this and do it off off camera and then just run the camera again once i'm done so you can skip this part but i'm just going to do it for now and this, this should be enough but maybe i'll do it again later after i'm done because i want to get to the other straps um so here we go let's just show you how it looks now oh much better you can see hopefully that it's just i don't have to use as much force it's just softer and more pliable right off the bat like that and then you want this to have a natural curve to it uh, especially since it's a thick watch you don't want to i don't i don't mind if i lay it down it doesn't have to sit flat because the wrist is round right it's curved so the strap should naturally form to that not a straight surface like a tabletop and i guess the same number of yeah, you know, I'm on the fifth hole from up here, but this wears so much nicer now. It doesn't make you feel much more comfortable. And what I do with the tip is I usually do a little pre-bend like this too. Just so do not have to go as crazy as the top part here. I just I mostly do in one direction because what I like to do is once you get that strap through here, um, that first keeper, and then to the second one. You know, sometimes if it's too straight, it just sticks right out, right? Doesn't look as good. So I tried to let me get this out of the way. Pre-bend it just a little bit, so just like that, right? Just bend it so that once you get it under the keeper, or the keeper over it, this loose part, it'll you know you leave this, and then it'll just naturally kind of get close to the the other part of the strap, right? So it doesn't stick out you can imagine if you didn't it would just kind of come out a little unsightly i just this is my routine that i do and um i say this keeper is actually pretty good i say this because um i'm pointing this out because a lot of times for some reason leather straps makers they always tend to make i find a lot of them tend to make this last keeper the second keeper the one that adjusts right to keep your very end down a bit too wide um you know and so it's kind of loose it doesn't have a nice you know hold on this part so it can slide back up or slip right off and then you know you're always fiddling with it to be in the perfect position so far uh, from what i can tell it doesn't seem too bad you don't want it overly tight but you know i think this one is maybe ever so slightly tighter than this one but i don't know why they always make this one good and tight but the outer ones for some reason they can't do that with if anything she kind of the reverse this one could be a little bit more because when you're trying to bend that strap into this part this is a very tight area to just try to stuff that strap into it could use a little bit more give just to facilitate getting that strap through and then the outer one should be the tighter one to lock, to really secure and hold this loose end bit. What goes on here doesn't matter so much. This is already tied down, usually stitched in um, to this position. So it's not going anywhere. So it can afford to be a little looser just to help you get initially get that end right through here because it's just a quick tight bend into it, right? And then here, this is where you really, that matters. You want this to adjust to where you want it, hold and not be loosey goosey and keep that end bit down but yeah this is actually a pretty at first when you pull it out and it's so such a straight board stiff you say oh man how is this going to work but this is nice and thick and uh i think it, uh, it really suits an, uh, the watch and i think it's going to break in nicely after you wear it in more patina natural oils and whatnot 
probably get some scratches, whatever. Um, that's okay. All right, so that's the look on this. I'll probably revisit it this weekend because, again, when I bring watches to work, I will wash them afterwards. Um, strap included, just what I do, there's a lot of particulates, can get dirty. Just trying to reduce contaminants, bringing it into my my own living space as well as anyone else I might potentially interact with. I don't know. I just It's just a ritual to sanitize things. So, good thing about these is they come with quick release bars. All the stuff. Um, even the NATO, they actually give you the quick release one so it's, you don't even have to need tools to actually get them off and on, which is great. I was curious how they were going to do this because um, I was wondering, is it one of those ones that look like a NATO but are actually two-piece, you know? And so they have like the spring bar actually built into it and then uh, as two pieces and then you just, you know, basically put it on like a two-piece strap but it looks like a NATO, right? It has a, the way you secure it at the, you know, the ends. Um, but apparently it is a, a legit NATO. Um, we're going to leave that to the side. So this is let me get I'm not gonna need this bag anymore, but I never throw any of my stuff away, even though I'll probably never reuse it. I should probably get a decent de decent set of like small like you know Ziploc baggies and get them on Amazon, I'm sure. I used to work at Tap Plastics, so they always had a bunch of those two plastic products. I'm just going to stick it in here with the strap options. We'll save this. Actually, we'll do it now. This, um, I'm going to give it a staple. I will not reuse or keep a, a, a reuse staple. It's kind of pointless. And you scratch and hurt yourself. Yeah, that's what was a watch, probably. So first impressions, um, it's not it doesn't it's not a seatbelt style I would say I mean the weave is kind of tight like one I would say but it doesn't have that really smooth and slippery kind of feel that um, a true I guess seatbelt style uh, strap would be um, but it's a good color it's pretty close to the watch it is a little brighter but. I don't mind that it's not a dead-on match. It's kind of good to have a little bit like an off tone, but you can see that it's related. Just to, I would say, the dangers of it's not dangerous, but the um, maybe a problem sometimes I have with matching a, a watch strap with exactly the same color as what's on the dial is that it might look like too much of the same color. I don't know. Sometimes it feels. I guess it depends on the watch style. It can feel a little overdone. But um, I do like, uh, you know, so if it's a little bit off, you know, you got something for that, you know, that, that shows off the strap in its particular color. And then the dial is kind of its own self, but in, together they still work, if that makes sense. Um, let's take off the plastic here. Yes, I will keep that somewhere. I don't know. It's just how I do it. Just in case I sell it, this the next buyer, if if and when I ever do sell something, can can dispose of it. But I will probably rewrap it to as much as I can using the original, um, you know, wrapping material and packaging and all that as I can. But usually these, you know, sticky things probably won't last very long, anyways. All right. And that's off, and I guess this one, oh, no, it does have it too, because it's very close. It's like, why would only two of them out of the three have it? And we'll take off the, this, and there's plenty of space here, so we'll just, we'll, let's keep the scissors sharp objects out of the way. We don't need to brush up against that and scratch it before we even had any wrist time. You know if that happened, I'd have to pause it, the recording and just cuss off the camera, then come back when I've chilled out. Because, you know, you don't want scratches on your watches, at least not at the very beginning, and if possibly for the first year. Um, but, you know, that's probably not going to happen. 
unless you have super good scratch resistant coating or you baby this like a mofo okay and there you go trick about needles is that I like to try to get an even spacing from lug to the first hardware at least this particular style and sometimes that, that doesn't necessarily mean that this sits directly in the middle between the two it's just because the way they're attached and the way it will roll off of the material it may actually end up being closer or further away from one side or the other depending so let's see how this wears put it down so i don't drop it even though it's i'm not very high and it's not like it's on a hard surface Drop it down like that. Again, fifth hole. It seems pretty consistent with that. And actually, I think I pretty much nailed a good balance between where this hardware is from here to there. It's not too too far off, which is good. Ah, cool. Signed um, buckle here. Pretty nice. It sticks up. And this goes right through. Now, the thing about these is... Um, I need to do a video on straps and NATOs and stuff like this. Not so much two-piece or bracelets, but specifically the difference between my strap options I like and and how I see them, like the Erica's original stuff I like, uh, some of the stuff from Haviston, uh, as well as your kind of basically your classic um, uh, NATO style straps as well. And I'm trying to think if there's something else. I have like watch steward ones, which are pretty cool. They're pretty unique in their own way. Uh, you can make them in different configurations, but I like the minimalist version myself. It just, and I would explain why in those videos, why it makes some better than the other. Um, I never understood why you need a second layer other than if you need to have a hardware to match the other side. Uh, I think the theory was that, let me take this off. I might have heard or read somewhere that why they have this extra piece is for this so that you have a redundant you know a system where this watch head can't slip off straight imagine if it was just a straight piece which a single layer which actually will is i kind of prefer because actually um if you didn't have this piece right it was just a single layer you know it could potentially slip right down through here maybe in the early days they didn't match the uh, lug width of the strap the strap width to the actual lug width of the watch maybe they were quite a bit small and i believe they were initially they didn't make them in 20 i think they like the james bond uh, nato strap infamously worn in dr no right what does he have 16 millimeters lugs or strap nato it's pretty small i don't even think it was an 18 i think it was a 16 on um, probably a 20 mil or at least a 19 right it's still quite a bit smaller and that you can imagine it's already not going to have a lot of uh, tension along the sides in here so it already it lends itself to being loose so i think it could potentially slip off especially it depends on how much space is between the spring bar and the case if there's gap is minimal which this kind of is it's not too bad it's kind of it's not super tight but it's just enough it should be fine to interlock the the weave or the material but you can imagine if that link opens up more there's a potential for it to just have a bit more give and could slide off and i think that's why you have did i point that out to you yeah it could slide it was that off camera i wasn't even paying attention i say it again so if it's here if it's too wide between the spring bars and the case open up that spacing there it could leave enough generous spacing there for the watch to slip right off if you pick it up and whoosh, or take it off your wrist also if you just let this weight free fall off down i can see it dropping so that's why i think that's why they have this piece here is to stop that from from happening and um, at least that's my theory and i believe that's what i read somewhere now with straps needle straps Oh, sorry about the, the knock. I really do need a better platform. But anyways, this works nice. The only thing about this one is that this one is fixed here too. They actually stitched in the second one, which is typical. I do like the ones where this part, one or the other is adjustable. 
uh, preferably the end one because I think that matters more than this one. This one right off of the buckle, that's fine being close to it here. It's just, you know, depending on the length, uh, how big your wrist size is will determine how much of this is left, right? So how much is there between the end, shorter or longer? As long as this could move, you can always accommodate that for, you know, the typical way is to put it through, oops, it's time to loose. Put it through like this, right? And pull it through. But if you're at that size as mine is, I could do it a little tighter, but it'll probably feel like a tourniquet later. Um, because your wrist do expand. See, it's on the, it's just, you can see here, it's just on the fold right by the thing. I, I can, I can't even, like the tip, Okay, I can just, I can get the tip in like that. That's it. That's no good. I don't generally like this look either with the tongue hanging back out this way. Uh, you know, usually people do that. It's easier to adjust and take off because it's, you got, you can get this grip here and push and pull it. But um, I just see, feel like it's already you're folding over material and then to have to see this last piece come over. I think it, for me, it always looked a little too much. So what I usually do, and especially since this strap is at that length for my wrist, at least, that I can't fold it all the way through and get some decent material through this back through this keeper, right? There, going that way, I try to hide it and tuck it under. You know, uh, you could custom cut it down so it just goes through here and stops. And usually the Haviston ones, even though they're adjustable, uh, they are at that right. Just enough length for me, at least, of um, my seven inches, seven inches wrist, wrist size, um, to just leave it like that. Just leave it up, and that's not too bad, especially when this hardware and it won't be as loose as this because I don't think their hardware is meant actually meant for you to roll it back. You probably could, but it's kind of on the tight side. I think it's meant for you to actually run it through once and just let it, you know, hang out. And you don't need to cut it, or you could if it really is too long for you. But anyways, um, I always roll it back in. So long way for me to just kind of explain that is I just tuck it back in inside. It's not that hard. Do that, and that should be just fine. And you see, you don't have to worry about that end piece not reaching this keeper. It's just hidden underneath. Maybe you can just make out where it is, and it may look kind of funky to you that you can see that piece but generally nah you're not going to really notice it it's just a cleaner look for me on the outside just to go here and then it wraps in right like that so it's got the rollover but at least it doesn't show that tongue one more time out this way you know you can then you can definitely see there's one and then another layer coming through even and then you can make out the one down here if it went back out but so when you go under not so much so that's what i like to do and that will probably fit well so this is a nice look, and this is probably going to do tomorrow. Uh, take this to work, set the time later, um, yep, and the date and all of that. And so let's move on to third option here. Get this out before I run out of time. And yeah, once people start coming home, then it gets kind of busy, and I, I got to kind of pause things, and I don't get to do the fun stuff that I like to do. Which is messing around with my watches, especially the new ones, right? So we'll set this aside and we're going to remove the spring bars because we won't need them because that has quick release in the solid end links. So we'll just clear the spring bars here to make room for this, for that. Now I believe, what time is it? Nine fifteen. Hopefully I can get this done in, within the next 10 minutes. I just want to end this before 9.30 and I try not to go over 45 minutes. But as you've seen some of my videos, I just like to yap and talk off a lot. If that's not your style, sorry. There are definitely other people out there that are making videos a heck of a lot shorter. But, um, you know, just talking it through. 
hopefully one watch buddy to another as I'm doing this. And, you know, this may not be new to you, and who cares, right? I mean, sizing my bracelet, but maybe you might, might maybe you might be new, or you, you don't feel comfortable with it still. This is a nice jubilee. Well, it splits, but it's a nice, nice fit there for the logo. So, yeah, like some others, I'm not generally a huge fan of um, butterfly style class, but if they're done well, and just so happens if also the rest of the bracelet is done well, not just the class, it should all work together pretty well. And and for instance, my um, Lorenzo DRZ04 Mondio. This is the first gen. This is not the newest one that they put out. He had a second run. He added, out of the original, only the white one made it back because it was so popular. Love this one. Though the new colors are awesome. I mean, that Tiffany or the light blue dial, powder blue dial, really cool for this design. Um, and I mean, that red radiant and that red meteorite and the purple. Um, I mean, all of those are great. It's to the point where I almost wanted to get another one, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to double up or triple up or quadruple up on the same basic watch. No, I mean, in some ways it makes sense because this is basically a fixed design. So since you can't change the strap out all that much other than the few stuff that Dorenzo has put out, which is basically only a rubber strap right now, but he is working on a leather one. Uh, we'll see how, you, if you might expand that, but it's still limiting. So the only other way you can change it up is actually by changing up the dial. And you can only do that if you get other <laughs> versions of this watch. But that's quite a lot to ask for. You must really love the design to just kind of go off of that. Uh, just for the color changes. But anyways, um, really nice butterfly class. And it did come with a uh, optional fold over. Kind of more traditional diver style or whatever. This fold over. But this, if you can, I recommend you keep it on... The butterfly, it just has an uninterrupted look instead of this, you know, you can imagine a regular flip lock clasp thing here, big rectangle. It's not the end of the world, but it just kind of, you just want this thing to flow from one side to the other, and it does. And if you can get the right fitting, hopefully, uh, as I have, this just actually works out really good for me. And that's why I'm going to use this as a basis to measure, uh, adjust size this one. Because you never know when your wrist is swollen or not when you're messing around with a new watch right whatever time of day that might be whatever you ate the weather who knows um especially if i've just taken a shower i, I thought i would swell up more but i actually shrink because i do find my watches wear looser after i've taken a shower i don't know it's weird i swear it should be the other way around but anyways um so i use this as a basis so i just kind of judge because i know this is a great fit for me without me I can't even adjust it, right? It's no micro adjust, and there really won't be for this. So um, you want to get it as nailed down as possible. I mean, that's what's good about the flip lock. You can have the micro adjust, but if you don't need it, I prefer this so you can keep it clean, at least on this particular style. So anyways, I know this fits. So if I kind of feel, put it on, feel the looseness of it, everything, that's what I set um my uh, measuring you know reference to to size this so that it feels and wears basically how this is right now because then i'll know when it gets hot cold whenever my wrist goes up or down this usually still is never too tight and never too loose um it works so if i can get it as close to how this feels then i will not to make a mouse with this thing later on like uh you know next day or a couple days whenever i have time you can hit it and nail it down the first time in terms of sizing the bracelet. So I just want to take this part off. That's how I do it. Then you can, you don't have to guess, right? You can, you have something to base your feeling of, on wrist width. So this will go on, let's take off this as well. Put that there for now. And there's still more on this side. I'm not going to need to 
by this one. And I think that's it. This is pretty nicely milled, I think. And with all these strap options, it's, I think I mentioned it in the uh, opening video, uh, the their aqua timer is basically the same case and everything. It's just that it's actually you got the rotating bezel and actually a tiny bit thinner than this one. I think this one's just a little bit more because it has a pointer date, so the perhaps the stack of the hands and everything all all there is uh, causing it to be just a little bit thicker, but it's not it's still not a thick watch at all uh, for field watch. <clears throat> and so yeah, so just an FYI, these should be all compatible. Um, but if you get do get an aqua timer as well, which I have been considering, um, I you know you'd have extra ones, <laughs> which is not a necessarily a bad thing. But I I do appreciate the um, for the price range for just under a thousand, still a lot of money. But at least you get a bunch of strap options right off the bat. At and they're pretty good ones. Is this right? Yeah, it's going to face this way upwards when I'm going to flip my wrist and look at it, right? It's not going to be upside down. Oh, this is pretty substantial. Uh, feeling. It's, I would say, yeah, maybe the way it's cut on the edges, similar to the one on my Bernina, it does feel like a pretty clean, I don't want to say sharp, but it is kind of a sharp cut. But I don't think you're going to cut yourself or bleed or it's uncomfortable. Because once it's on the wrist, at least with the other ones, with the Bernina uh, Corona Sport, it's kind of um, it's more of an Oyster or H-Link style. I can't even remember. But uh, it's fine once it's on wrist. So there, you just pinch those two um, levers here, I guess, on both sides. And there you go. A whole new look. Oh, wow. This, I have to say, this feels pretty darn substantial, but of course, it has all its full length. Let's see how, just, how much. Wow, this, this is a lot of links. I think. Let's close it up. And I don't think it matters which side you close first. So, yeah. Um, I don't have big foot arms. So, um, but maybe this might work on my ankles. All right. So, um, I usually start, as, as I mentioned in some of my other videos where I'm sizing, I start on the inside because if anything, I like to nail down this side to make sure that at least from here to here, this piece will end up, you know, at least I'll nail down one side so that when it comes over, this should be right down the middle, like right down the palm, like something like that. That's where I want to get it. And then, then if I know, so once that's down, then I know what to do on this side. And then I should be able to nail it pretty close. So, um, I think I'm going to just show you part of it and pause the video because it's going to take me a while to do maybe a little bit longer than you want to look at. But I'll get you at least an idea of what to expect because looking at, so I'm going to check this out. Um, is there, yeah, there's arrows here. So it's definitely uh, like a push pin or a friction pin system. You see here, the arrow. So that generally means since it's not split here, I wonder, am I seeing ring around it? Is there like a small collar around the end? Well, if there is, I kind of doubt it because I don't think the ring should be on this side. If they are, I mean, dang. If there's like a small ring on this side, when I have to, after I size it, I need to tap it in. I got to have something on this end to hold that ring in, the, the, you know, the, that tube or whatever that's in here that that this side may have to tap into and through, right? Otherwise, it would just knock it straight out and it won't have anything to hold it. I don't know if that's the case, but I'm just trying to, I'm just guessing you know, if I'm seeing a ring around it. I hope not. But we'll see, find out soon. So, um, let me go get my thing and tap it out. Okay, oh, I found something that's, I don't want it super tight. I'm not sure if there's a ring, because if there is, this needs to be maybe a smaller 
smaller one. Even by a little bit. I mean, they're <laughs> practically the same size. Right, let me see. Now that one's thicker. I'm just trying to see. This one might possibly be a little bit skinnier. Yeah, this one's thicker. No, these other ones are thicker. All right, well, I think this is the skinnier one, so we'll see if we um, do this here. So I zoom in a little, a little bit, but I need to have my working space. So I'm gonna start from the top down like the upper one that I can remove first. It's not. Move it. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna somehow accidentally, because sometimes Something's being held up. You might be actually tapping on the inside of the link and uh, somehow and especially if you cleared it. And then the link starts to separate from itself, which could be a real bitch. It is coming out. I don't see. I pray there's no freaking collar in here. I, I'm fine with just split pins. Sorry, just trying to get in here. So. I'm trying to feel for this. Oh. Okay, make sure. So when you do this, carefully separate it. This could be a pain too, because they're all separate links. So it's, that's nice, but uh, just lining it back up can be kind of a hassle. And so I don't think I saw any collar attached. So, yeah, it's just a thick spring bar or split pin. So um, these work fine. Put that over there. So I close it up. So I need to know what it feels like. So I want to make sure the, the watch is actually, you know, put that down. It's actually centered here. And I put this, I gotta be careful since I'm working over a camera. And I hold it like this to see, make sure that this part is basically right, you can see right by the center of my middle of my wrist, which I removed over slightly, right about there. And so, uh, all right. I kind of drop it down and I just sort of, can you see this? Sorry, this is a wide angle, but I'm letting the, the top part drop, drape over and I'm holding this and I'm just trying to gauge where the links, need, where I need to, sorry, I'm off camera again. I'm just trying to gauge where is the best part to knock off the next you know, set of links so that it'll attach just about right. And I'm thinking, sorry, I'm thinking taking off three should do it. Uh, let me see, or maybe four. This is going to be tricky. I think three. Sorry, I'm trying to see this from my side. Um, because you don't want to be too tight. Actually, too loose. I think. Okay, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for three, knocking off three of these from this side. So we're gonna open that up so we've got some space to work. So we're gonna take out three of them, and let's see. It goes down this way. And I hope that's right.
I knock it out with more confidence now because I know, because if I, if there, if there was a somehow a collar on the inside, if this, if this uh, pin, whatever, the tap, whatever you call this, is too wide, it's going to hit the collar, and then the collar can't, it's not meant to go all the way through, right? So be held in one spot inside one of the links when you, if you were to tap it through. I know, I'm trying to think, maybe it was a Seiko that had that. It's a pain in the ass because you have to actually hold it. Uh, sometimes it, that collar's in the middle links, but there, there's a Jubilee, so it's not really possible. They don't have one center link. So if they did do one, maybe sometimes they would do it on the outer, outer one, so there's like a small little ring. I do have a watch that does have that. I can't remember which one. And so it's a pain in the butt because you got to find some way to secure it on the outside while you tap it back in, and then then hopefully you, you can work it back. Anyways, uh, we're going to put this here and remove that. And I usually will keep, I put this together so I know that this went through this um, this part of the link. I just, I tried to put it back the way it came. So what that means is um, this pin that's right here was part of this link in here. The, you know, it went through three of them instead of just the two, if that makes sense. The outer, it went through the outer ones, through and through. So I try to use that one. I don't know. It's just my way. So. Okay, hang on. Again, yeah, a slight interruption. So I'm going to try to wrap this thing up quicker. Uh, so yeah, so I put the pin back in, uh, obviously it went out this way, so it's got to go back in this way. I did put it the right side in, make sure you don't want to put the split pin head in first. And so I'll lightly tap it in, use the soft side, shouldn't scratch it, just enough to, hopefully, you want to make sure it's, don't go full on, just kind of make sure you, everything's going in straight, because if it's somehow not set in the last part if it's on the outer that could possibly tap out the link um you know what i mean because you're basically hammering it with the, with this as a pin right on the inside of this i've had that happen um yeah i felt kind of stupid and kind of pissed me off and then you gotta find a way to tap it back together to make sure it's tight so it's not so you know it does it can potentially add a gap. So anyways, I'm not gonna go full on. We're gonna test it because um, it may need to be another link. And I think it might. So I'm just thinking, okay, my wrist sits just like that. Back this up a little. So if that's the case, look at here. Well, it's not too bad actually. Though I feel like, yeah, I could go with one less link and make it closer to this side. Right? Or if it gets loose on this side, it may, if I have it worn, see, that's the thing I gotta think. If I move it over here, I gotta be sure that, you know, if I, if I want it a little loose, then it might it might naturally shift over a little bit, which might not be such a bad thing, you know. It just I, uh, that might be a little bit on the loose side thing. You know, I'm just thinking, how much is there going to be kind of hanging off of there? Is that going to be too much? Right. I let this loose. I can imagine. So I pull this up on this side, maybe. Pull it up on that side. Sorry, it's kind of in the shadows. The light's coming in from in front mostly. Let's see, it's not the worst thing. No, that's why I need. My reference watch. I know how this sitting. I can kind of determine 
where that one needs to be. Okay, this is basically how it is. And actually, that might be about right. It's not perfectly centered, but it's close enough. And you can see, right? Because this is the center, this is a little bit off, but it has a little bit of slack to kind of slide over. Because um, I don't want to make it too uneven. Okay, hang on. Okay, hopefully this will be the end of the interruptions. So, um, yeah, so I have my reference watch. Um, and I think, basically, it looks like it's going to sit approximately in the same spot as that one, my Dorenzo, like the... This isn't, that wasn't actually perfectly centered, like right down this part of my wrist, which I considered more center, right? It's kind of off to this side. And I haven't even adjusted this side yet, but you know, I'm using one side to base it off of first. And I think if I do that and I get this one honed in, it should be about right. So I'm not gonna show you me tapping out the other side. Um, I'll just show you the end result in a moment, hang on. Okay, so I uh, removed two links, and that one uh, on this side, which is the outer side, and as you recall, I did three on that on the inside earlier. And actually, I think that should match up with what I have on my Dorenzo. And I think typically for me, most links tend to be like that, link bracelets. I'll take out three, it's basically usually uh, three and two, three and two, less on the outer side, because usually, the outer wrist part is longer. So, uh, yeah, rarely is it even for me. Um, you know, it's maybe two and one, but usually there's not that few links. I think uh, in general, if I recall, usually it's two, two sets of links and three on the outer, or rather three on the inner and two on the outer. And so, and I don't tap it in again all the way. It's still sticking out a little bit. Because um, in case I feel like maybe I didn't, guesstimate it correctly um i can you know i didn't fully commit to seating it back in i don't like to fully get it in and fully get it out it just you don't want to work that pin in and out too much i think in my opinion you could potentially just get looser and and i don't know just less wear and tear and, and hammering of it and everything and anything that's nearby it that you know the less of that the better uh, you can nail it in um as few as strokes or hits as possible. Yeah, so here we go. This is how it's wearing. Is my back out enough? And yeah, so it sits about where my... I'll bring that back in real quickly to show you, just to see how generally how loose it is. Right? I, I just don't like it when it starts to roll over to the outer. It does annoy me, but uh, we'll see. My wrist might not be swollen as it is maybe in the daytime, so that could fix, you know, remedy itself out later. At nighttime, you know, colder, whatever, um, you know, I'm less active too. That might lend myself to being not as, you know, swollen or thick as later in the day. Or while in the bright daylight when it's warmer and I'm busy working my arms and everything throughout the day. So, yeah, so you can see that this is basically where it sits. Here's the middle of my my palm, and probably that's how I kind of run the line, invisible line down my wrist. It's pretty close. It's, it could be over there maybe, but this is not too bad for where it's at. Uh, give myself a little bit of looseness. You want to have a, at least everyone's different, but I try to get. And I think Federico from Pretty Guitar Watches said he kind of sizes his bracelet similarly. Uh, is that you just have enough to get at least like one finger. Kind of in underneath and it should be good enough and i think that can go for any strap but it really depends on the watch if it's heavier and depending on what kind of strap you have you might need it actually a little bit tighter i you know something that's too heavy and you don't strap it down long enough or well enough this part can kind of rickety rock and kind of it does not feel comfortable you do need to secure it better and that's better snug fit uh, is better than not and i found that to be the case with say my seiko SBC 005. Uh, it's, it's kind of a thick chronograph. Uh, works well with the bracelets. That balances it out. But once you put it on the leather strap, I did have to kind of get a little bit more snug and secure it. But it's not constricting at all. It's still comfortable, but it feels more, more secure without this thing bobbing around. But this is not a particularly heavy watch. So 
uh, it's about the same. Uh, I'm sure the Durant is has, it's thinner and has less metal, but um, anyways, this is about the fitment I think I want. We'll compare it right back to that. You can see kind of the loosey jangliness of it, how far it can kind of go over or not. It doesn't really go that far over, at least this position. If I pull it down, might be, but see, I can also you can see the travel too between here and like I can go as much as like right covering the wrist bone at least the outer part is probably easier to gauge than the inside because there's like a little bit more of a bump so it can go right about there and then it has a less looseness to go a little bit below that and you see again um this is kind of on this side but it's not terrible you know at least when i'm putting it up here it seems to fit just about right not too bad and so if i compare that one more time to my dorenzo granted this oh god is this a 40 or 39 i think that i think that he's supposed to be 39 i can't even remember um so the case shape size wise it should be about the same but the most important thing too is this fitment the looseness of it can I go right up to about here to cover my wrist bone? If we go and let it drop back or just kind of push it back. It can go. Granted, this is part is a bit wider because of the of this integrated case design. Um, integrated uh, bracelet design it's generally wears wider at the lugs than uh, ones that aren't right. So, but then yeah, basically it's right below the bone. Um, I think the general looseness. I can basically get about a finger through and I'm gonna right about here, turn it over. That seems about right. It's kind of similar to where that is, just a little bit off center to this side, uh, to the right. Um, but overall, I think it's about the right looseness and tightness to compensate throughout the day and, and not feel too loose when it's shrunk and all that. So I think I've nailed it. So that's that's why I keep um, a reference watch that I know is set to a comfortable level. It could be one that's not butterfly, but just so happens that these are both butterfly. That even is even a better um, reference, right? Because uh, they're both similar style. So you know it would make sense to to try to match that. But even if it wasn't, if I had like a fold over. The same, it should still basically have that general same fitment uh, close enough where you can still judge it, uh, even though the class style is different. Um, ultimately, you just kind of gauge how, how loose and tight it is on your wrist at this moment while you're trying to adjust the size. And then it should um, translate to it being the same wear ability that you like and enjoy, that you found perfect already for that watch, that reference watch or whatever one, right? So with that in mind, then I can finalize this by tapping in the, make sure it's in. Yeah, I don't have to worry about damaging it. I mean, this is pretty solid. Oh, there we go. Getting kind of flush and I'll finish it off. So I tap it in, you see how these were stock? Just kind of match it. They're a little bit inset. This one is definitely can push out a little bit more and you can definitely see this is flush but then these are kind of inset so i'll tap it in just a tiny bit with this now i'm gonna have to i don't know do you really need to see this but just be careful that you actually are right above the pin and i could use the metal side but i feel like the plastic being or this urethane whatever it is um being a little bit more gentler or softer, a little less jarring, might have more control and maybe less uh, vibration. I, I don't know. That's, that's a force of habit. Anyways, just gently tap it back in just so you can try to match the the uh, how much the other ones are set into the, the bracelet. So you should be sure that everything holds the same. And again, you just want to make sure you really are centered over that pin. 
you need to start tapping it back in because if you're slightly off, and especially if your pin, the tool you're using a little bit wider diameter, very close to the actual hole, like it's a pretty tight fit. You might be too close and it might be actually over the edge and then you might be accidentally tapping into the um, the edge of that <laughs> the link itself and that around that hole and then you're going to see a dent or a scratch probably likely a dent because you're, you're hammering away so that in mind that looks close enough you just check the back twos get an idea that should do and then so i just have to do this one right here do the same thing I'll work it in as closely as I can to get it flush with this. This one is soft, so it's hard enough to hammer, but not enough to damage it. At least not straight on for too prolonged times. It's not meant to ding anything. So, it's as good as I can get it. And it doesn't seem to be going there, which maybe it isn't. Then I guess I will take a more aggressive approach and just um, use it, the pin here and hammer it in more directly. Again, just kind of go, make sure it centers. That's why I do a couple of taps. And check and recenter it. Make sure, try to make sure it's centered. I'm, I'm working at some distance because the camera's right in front of my face. So I am not nearly as close as I generally would be. So I have to be extra careful. Because as you're tapping, it can vibrate and shift laterally. And especially if you haven't gone into the hole enough, it could still slide, you know, somewhere in between. And you could, Potentially, almost there. Be hammering the link itself and making a little ding on the edge of that hole, which kind of would suck. And I think that looks about right. Yeah, there you go, and one more time just to see the fruits of my labor. I know this is a long one, went over an hour, but um, I don't know. I just want to document the process, show it off. Maybe that might help build some confidence as you may be attempting to this. Some people still have had a lot of watches, but they still don't feel comfortable doing their bracelets. I say, just go for it. Don't worry about it. Making mistakes not the end of the world, but you know there are certain things you can do to ensure that you you uh, do it right and and also um um you know do it as efficiently as possible. So now I shouldn't have to ever mess with this. This is set for my wrist sides unless I gain a heck of a lot of weight or I go on a crazy starvation thing like a <laughs> food protest or something. Uh, I shouldn't change much in terms of needing to adjust this or we take out any more links or put any back on should be good to go and um uh, which like which 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 one looks best i don't know i'm a bracelet guy so I, I do dig this this look of course but um anything goes i mean if i had to choose one i always probably would choose a bracelet just because <laughs> it just seems like it would just last longer uh over anything else those, could, those straps can always wear out Bracelets, not so much, but maybe in the class mechanism. But overall, because it's metal, right, it should hold up. But behold. Um, if I didn't mention it and you're not sure, this is a 38.5 or so. Maybe somewhere between that and 39, but basically you consider this a 39 millimeter watch. Um, and it probably was a little bit smaller to that because, you know, the bezel, even even though it's smooth, it's still a bezel here. To, and the size of that dial in relationship does, I think, bring down the size 
maybe a tad. So maybe it does feel a little bit more like a 38. I don't know. Because if my Dorenzo is a 39, I want to say I think it is. I don't, 40 seems a little bit big for this. And I don't believe it's a 40. But then the dial opening and the bezel is smaller too. So it will look kind of bigger. But um, these are my micro brands. Um, so you'll be seeing some of this, more of this for sure, in the coming days. And uh, we'll see. Uh, definitely going to hit this for this last part of the week into next week. And then we should be back on to rotating through what I have now. Um, and I think that should be it for a while. Uh, but we'll see. Anything goes. I've been saying that for a long time. But uh, um, things do come up. And then, magically, some new stuff to show. Thanks for watching, and I will and hang in there. I know it's way over long. I hope um, no big deal if you fast forwarded. I get it, but um, either way, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next.